All right, once again, it's Merc80.com, and we are in the house with my good friend, Matthew Murphy. How you doing, man? What's up? How's it going, man? All right. So let's get right into it. The very first question is, in your own words, what is your story and how you fell in love with what you do? Uh, you know, well, I fell in love with movies. Well, I fell in love with was movies. And the moment I fell in love with movies happened when I was eight years old when my father got like the deluxe premium HBO package with three HBOs, two Cinemaxes, and two Showtimes. And for some reason, he allowed me to have a TV in my room. And so basically, I just no longer had a reason to go out. I could just sit there and watch movies all day and then go out to eat food and, you know, get, get dinner and stuff like that. And just when you do that with your childhood like I did, I mean, you know, how could you not love movies? It was my favorite thing to do was just watch movies all day. So kind of I, I grew up on it. It took me a while to realize uh, that, that a writer is what I was. I wasn't sure of that for a long time. I actually got a master's degree in neurobiology. I set out to get a PhD in brain science thinking that that was going to make me happy and then eventually you know I was, I was doing science all day I was like operating I was a, an experimental veterinary surgeon I operated on rabbits and I'd stick electrodes in rabbit brains and we'd like shock them to see what would happen which it was a little it was more sophisticated than that but it wasn't it, it was something I thought was interesting and I just I was spending all my time, I was really bad at it because I was spending all my time writing screenplays. Uh, I was, everything I was doing, all my energy was going into trying to like write these stories that, that are popping into my head. It took me a while to figure it out, but the truth is like, since I was eight years old, I mean, I was a writer and it was just a matter of time until I discovered it, you know? If you were to say who are some of your influences, I guess as writers, or even like your favorite movies. Um... Probably the best screenwriter in America right now for me is Aaron Sorkin. Aaron Sorkin's amazing execution like everything he does is just incredibly well put together he's just he writes these you know german cars you know of, of a script you know it's just it's just everything most impressive work i see going on right now is going on in tv and so a lot of my favorite work would be uh, things the showrunners are doing i love justified grandiose uh, justified uh, of course matt weiner on mad men i don't remember the name of the guy who does good wife but that's excellent but you know just the their tv is really the uh, kind of place where writers get to show off these days. But there's still some amazing screenwriters out there. Preston Sturgis is one of the greatest comedy writers that's ever lived. He's fantastic. Um, if you're looking for someone back in the day, Billy Wilder is fantastic. If you love movies, you know, you, you will find out that you love writers too, you know, once, once you get actually into looking at it. You know? A couple times before when we've talked about screenwriting and, and it seems almost like a rule of thumb uh, about screenwriting is to uh, keep things simple. Um, in in your opinion, what's the line between keeping things simple and then making things simplistic or yeah. you know dumbing it down? I have never once in my entire life read a script that was bad because it was too simple. That has never happened. Never once in my entire life. I'm not sure there is such a thing. Have you ever seen a movie and said, "Oh, this movie was bad because it had too little going on. It was too focused on one thing." Whereas almost everyone who sets out to write a screenplay for the first time sets out, you know, initially say, okay, I'm gonna be a writer. They always have a hundred ideas and they try and put them all on top of one another on a page. And it's just like trying to lay a hundred photos of one another on top of one another. You know, you're just not gonna see anything. You have to remove. And, and the, the art of writing is more about being able to remove and get down to one thing than anything else. That is so, the, the, the one thing that every writer has to learn to get anywhere. So by far, simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. It's everything for screenwriting. If you could, that's, the other things other people can do. If you're not funny, a great actor can make you funny. If you don't have a great sense of, it's on scene, a great sense of pace, a great director can put in the pace. The only thing you actually need to be able to do as a writer is get down to the core of the story and make sure that you are telling one person's story, one experience, um, that a person, like really one problem is how I like to think of it. Like I think of it that, that what a script is really about is a person solving a single problem and all the ins and outs of that one problem for 90 minutes. And that's what you have to do as a screenwriter. That's why um, the artist was nominated for best screenplay, even though no one talked, you know? They didn't need dialogue. Dialogue is not what a writer does. What a writer does is finds that problem. So my answer is yes, always oversimplify. Do your best to oversimplify. It'll be very easy to recomplicate, make something more complicated later. Well, what I've been trying to figure out lately is what is the line between simplifying and then making it cliche or saying like, you know, 
people are too stupid to understand this, so we have to kind of wash away anything that makes people think. Is simplification take away thinking? That's you, what I mean. This is this is the problem that we face as writers. It's like everyone's. You have a story you want to tell, and you have to convey it. And what I see, I'm sure it's possible to oversimplify. Um, and I'm and you can certainly. There's something to be said for like you know not assuming your audience is stupid, but the thing that writers do when they're starting out, or okay, the thing that I did, you know, um, and the thing that everyone I've ever known who's been a writer d did that hurts them for years is they overestimate how much information the, a camera can hold. Like, they, they overestimate how much you can actually get out of, um, like, a scene. Like, in one scene, you usually learn one thing. Like, on paper, you really learn one piece of information. This guy comes in, and we're supposed to learn that this guy, that he's not trustworthy. Okay, so he comes in, and he slinks on, you know, scene, and he's like his beady-eyed, and blah, blah, blah. And by the end of the scene, the audience is thinking, man, I don't trust that guy. That's a fine scene. If you want us to, him to come in and for us to think he's not trustworthy, but that he's also probably a really nice guy underneath, and he also he might have a drug problem, and he, but I bet he loves his mom. If you want to give, like, which is a, what a real person is like, there's a, a whole complexity on there. If you try and put all that in one scene, we're not going to get anything. We're going to have absolutely no information about that guy as the audience because the camera and the page cannot carry that much information. You have to respect your capacity for the how much you can convey. And that's why you need to tell a simple story. So I say, if if you manage to tell a story that's too simple, great. Show it to people, and they will put it in the Smithsonian because it will be the first script ever in the history of time that the pro its problem was that it was overly simple. Uh, simple. Most of them, by far, are too complicated. So that would be my advice.